What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video with the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the Evolution XS December 2022 build and this is of course based on Android 13, 14th December 2022 build. Let me show you the change logs. In the past 2 to 3 days I would say this one got about 4 to 5 updates but this is the latest one as of today which is 14th December. In the ROM changes you will see the change log of the things which has been fixed if you're noticing. But talking about flashing, the flashing procedure is still similar. You can follow the ext4 flashing method from the description. If your storage is decrypted or if you are coming from MIUI, you can follow the complete flashing guide video. With that, just follow unlocking bootloader and installing custom recovery and just formatting data kind of part. Afterwards, you can follow the ext4 method. And of course, if you format data, you don't need to wipe anything for the first session. I personally feel this is still gonna give you one of the best Android 13 experience in my opinion. This device was launched like about three to four years ago with 60 Hertz AMOLED display, which was fine. But right now with this Evolution X ROM, the display is currently running at 90 FPS or 90 Hertz. Or even you can see with the test UFO website, my device's display is running at 90 Hertz. This is insane with this particular ROM. 90 Hz you are getting right out of the box over here. But you have to enable it by going into the display settings or from the quick toggles which I'll show you later on. But yes, if you have replaced your display or if you have broken it and went to the service center and got a new display, I would not recommend going above 60 Hz at all. Just stick with the normal stock 60 Hz experience. That's when everything is gonna be working out fine for you. But otherwise, if you have replaced your display and if you switch to 90 Hz, don't blame me for whatever happens later. Let me show you the about section. This is how it looks like. We still have the Evolution X logo and we have the Android version as 13. The Evolution X version shows as 7.4. The name is Caldrata. The security patch you are getting latest of December 5th, 2022. That's great. The stock kernel here is still Soviet star kernel. 14 December 2022 build. The SNX data is showing as enforcing. In the system panel, we are getting a system updated. You can check for updates if you want. In the gestures, we have the quickly open camera, the system navigation gestures. In the settings of it, we have both the pill length and pill radius customization. And if you increase both of these, this is how the pill bar will actually look. We have this hide IME button space, the swipe to invoke assistant should be also working fine as you can see. The left edge right edge customization is there. Then we have this amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture. Of course, 100 mode works perfectly fine. The double tap option is there for double tap to check phone. In the press and hold power button, we have both options. You can switch from power menu to digital assistant over here. And we also have the swipe break screenshot. That too is working fine. We have the share, edit, delete, and the Google lens, and even the capture mode feature. Let me just delete the screenshot for the time being. We have the quick mute, prevent ringing, etc. options. In the pop-up camera settings, we have the sound effects, then the camera LED option. Let me talk about the stock camera. Well, you are getting a Google camera Go Edition stock camera. And with that, the front camera is also working fine if you're noticing. So yeah, even portrait mode should be working fine. There is no issues at all. Let me just take a quick photo. And as you can see, it took the portrait picture pretty fine. And yes, the quality is good enough, I would say. Everywhere, this is a like really smooth experience. Even in the video settings, you can go and shoot it, this is just a pointed shoot kind of camera, I would say. So yeah, Gcam Go is present by default and you can shoot photos, videos or translate stuff even in portrait mode. Photos you can shoot. But here I have installed this LMC 8.4. You can actually switch the lenses if you want. The 2x telephoto lens is actually working fine. If you're noticing, this is the 2x telephoto lens I have switched to right now. And with the 1x, let me actually show you. Yeah, this is the 1x. It is working fine. Even the 0.66x or ultra wide angle lens so right now, as you can see, I can move around and stuff if I want. So all these three lenses are working fine with this camera. So this is great. You can install it if you want. I'll link this camera in the description. Also in the video settings, you can shoot up to 4K 60fps if you want. But yes, we do not get any MIUI camera and stuff. All those things are simply missing. Now talking about the UI and stuff. Yes, everywhere I see buttery smooth experience. I did not face any issues even in the stock launcher. This is the Google Pixel launcher, I would say and swiping up will get you to the app drawer swiping down will get you to the notification panel now you can edit and add multiple toggles over here everywhere as you can see there are huge amount of options we have the wi-fi toggle the mobile data the mobile data is currently disabled because i don't have a sim card in the device right now but yeah as soon as you insert a sim card it should be appearing right there and faulty e calling and stuff working perfectly fine and here this is how the bluetooth kind of toggle looks like the animations just looks dope in my opinion and here we have the dark theme, the nightlight, 
always on display you can toggle for charging as well we have the hotspot the screen recording and here we also have a hevc screen recording option in, in case you want to use that and we have the device audio microphone audio all those customizations now we have the google home controls the fps info the heads up and stuff reboot toggle is right there we have the data saver nearby share the airplane mode volume panel kind of toggle and the refresh rate switching option is also there the ambient display you can toggle it on or off from here anti flicker or disrimming is there and the live display option is also there if you want to switch the display to outdoor bright sun mode or very bright kind of mode you can definitely do that from right here now talking about 90 hertz yes this has slight bit of color kind of greenish tint I would say if you compare it with 60 hertz pretty much for a normal user i don't think you will be noticing that here so that's how i feel but one thing that i do not like even in the light theme the quick string panel stays dark over here that's how it is and in the power menu this is how it looks like you can go into the advanced reboot and you can reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here these options are still present now in the dark theme let me just enable that and let me show you from right here let me just tap and hold on it and here in the dark theme kind of section we have this custom theme option so we have this vivid which will actually give you pitch black and we have this normal black option then we have this paint in snow and the espresso options all these custom themes are there for the dark theme by the way i have been using a wallpy wallpaper on this rom and this actually looks beautiful to me at least but yeah of course there is that papers app if you want to use the evolution access own wallpapers you can definitely do that they are pretty simplistic i would say yes talking about the widgets in the home screen this is actually working fine the subscriber count widget and also there is the google clock widget that is actually working fine too and even the animations of these are working fine but let me show you i have this battery widget added but here it only shows the phone's battery it doesn't show the bluetooth battery for some reason i have tried to re-add it i have tried to resize it doesn't help i would say so that's how it is sometimes it says loading so yeah the battery widget is not properly working as of right now and in the evolver settings you will find all the customizations and again we have this dark theme kind of customization the headline and body fonts customization plethora of fonts are there if you want to skip this customization part you can do that with the timestamps by the way and we have the icon packs these are the options we have the signal icons and these are the options you will get and we have the wi-fi icon styles then we have the icon shapes as well and we have the nav bar styles too if you are using the navigation buttons let me go back we have the status bar option and we get the clock customization the battery style customization is just huge it's notice you can just scroll through this there are plethora of battery icons for the status bar and i have been using it with the icon landscape right but you can also use other options if you want battery percentage you can choose the position inside or next to the icon we have the battery bar the status bar kind of icons colored icons etc options are there and you can see from the screen there are huge amount of options in the notifications we have the re-ticker the heads up and we have the heads up kind of customization the less boarding option is there right now and we have the do not disturb kind of battery light and we have the in-call vibrations as well let me go back we have the quick setting panel customization and the battery style you can just put it to follow status bar style so that it will follow the status bar's battery icon style on the quick setting panel too and we have the quick pull down quick setting panel and stuff the show brightness slider option you can change the position over here so there are again amazing amount of customization option and we have the advanced reboot and stuff you can enable it or disable it from right here in the gestures we do have the brightness control by sliding a finger on the status bar toggle flashlight when the screen is off with the power button option is there and we have the double tap to sleep on the lock screen and status bar let me go back in the lock screen we have the udfps customization and there we have the screen of fod and we have the udfps haptic feedback and these are the icons you will get on this particular rom huge amount of options again and they definitely look beautiful and different from other roms in my opinion and we also have the udfps animations and if you want to enable it these are the animations you will get also there is a jensen fire but the jensen fire has a newer kind of look i'll show you that let me actually show you the fingerprint scanner speed so yeah this is how it looks like just and it actually unlocks really fast let me try one more time yeah it unlocks fine but i cannot really show you the center of the fingerprint scanner icon but yeah this is how the animation looks there are the lock screen charging info the hide status bar option and we have this ripple effect the fingerprint error or authentication vibration media cover art and we have this hide quick setting panel in the lock screen too all these options you will get including with the edge lighting option and of course you can change the accent color to the notification color and stuff for the edge lighting if you want in the buttons we have the navigation bar customization then we have the show volume panel on the left side power app volume control and stuff is there 
I can expand the volume panel just like this and once I'm playing music this is how it looks like and I can switch the output device from right here and this is how the output device switching actually looks. By the way you can control the app volume just like this. Inside animation we have the screen of animation, power menu animation and stuff. In the mist settings we have the always on display customization, the scheduling option I mean and we have the game space so if you are a gamer you can add any particular game and you can customize between these many options. Launch music app on headset connect automatically and we have the unlimited google photo storage, unlock higher fps in games and even the netflix spoof is there. We have the volume panel timeout, very convenient features I would say and we have the ignore secure level flags and the wake lock blocker, alarm blocker, even the USB configuration is there. I have set it to file transfer, that's convenient for me. Now in the battery settings, this is how it looks like. Sadly, we do not get the battery charging cycle and stuff. All those things are simply not present right now, but we do have the smart charging option. We have this battery charge warning as well. Then we have the battery optimization. You can optimize per app battery profile and the battery temperature of course shows up. But then again, no charging cycle, no current battery capacity, no reason battery capacity. Those things has been removed for some reason. And here, let me talk about the battery life. Well, I have tested the battery life with the Aku battery app. And with that, if you're noticing the screen on, right now I have got about 8 hours and 40 minutes of screen on time. That's again a huge amount of number in my opinion for a three and a half years old device at least. But let me tell you, I have got a new battery over here. That's why my screen on time is that much. You can see the screen off. So the standby time should be about eight days or about a week here it shows. And here we have the combined use as 60 hours. So overall in terms of battery life, I do not have any complaints on this ROM. Even the fast charging is working fine with a 18 watt or a 33 watt fast charger. But yes, with 33 watt fast charger, the device does get a little bit more hot. But with the 18 watt fast charger, the heating is not noticeable at all. I like the charging animation on this ROM, by the way. In the sound and vibration, we have this kind of settings, the do not disturb, the phone ringtone and stuff, and vibration haptics, the ringtone vibration pattern changing option. If you scroll down more, we have the screenshot sound, the charging sound, etc. Charging vibration as well. We have the silent media mute option and we have even more customization for that. Then we have the Mi Sound Enhancer and from here you can choose it to Youth Edition and with that the sound quality very headphone jack and Bluetooth as well was amazing even with speakers. The Hi-Fi audio option is also there if you have a really great pair of headphones you can definitely use that. Also the haptic feedback you can customize thoroughly so there is no issues with the haptic feedback on this particular ROM. You can definitely customize it however you want. The clear speaker option is also there. Let me go back to the display settings here we have the brightness level, the adaptive or auto brightness, extra dim and inside lock screen we have the show device control, the control from lock screen and we have the always show time and info that's the always on display, always on when charging option and the screen of A40 is right there we have the wake screen for notifications you can disable it if you want. In the advanced settings we will get the ambient display kind of options and there we have this pickup but just notice how much simplified the ROM is right now. In the pickup section it shows disabled then it shows pulse notification on pickup and then it shows wake device on pickup so you can actually choose what it does when you pick up the device on your hand. So I have selected that to pulse notification on pickup so let me just lock the device and put it on my desk. Just right now if I just pick this device up as you can see the screen wakes up in the ambient display. Let me unlock it and this is how it looks. So very convenient features everywhere I would say. Pocket detection, the dark theme and the display size and text. You can also enable the high contrast text if you want. Then we have the smallest width and stuff, the wallpaper zoom. In the live display, we have these outdoor bright sun mode again, anti-ficker, reading mode, color calibration, everything is there. Again, you can change the refresh rate from this panel, like minimum, maximum, but I would rather go with this toggle to actually switch the refresh rate. We have the double tap to wake, prevent accidental wake up, wake up on plug, even the refresh rate per app you can choose, but there is only 60 hertz and 72 hertz option. You don't get per app 90 hertz option for some reason. The DRM4 stays as L1, safety net passes right out of the box over here so you should not be having any issues while using banking apps right out of the box on this ROM. In terms of security we have the settings option and in here you will get the quick unlock if you want that and of course in the more settings there is the app lock let me actually show you choose unlock like this and in the protected apps you can lock any particular app that you are willing to and you can even go further like to redact notification and hide from launcher all these options are there. Auto lock timeout you can customize that. Let me actually go back and there is also the face unlock. Let me just set it up. But let me show you that. You just double tap to lock the device and right now if I double tap to wake and if I swipe up then only it will use the face unlock. And as you can see it unlocks the device with the face unlock. Let me try one more time. 
so yeah only swiping up will bring the face unlock kind of experience and here as you can see i am in the lock screen it doesn't bring the front camera only if i swipe up that's when it will use the face unlock let me enable the always on display for the time being so that i can show you that and this is how the always on display looks like and from here too the double add to wake is working fine and if i show you the few minutes scanner speed and again the fingerprint scanner speed from the lock screen or always on display even the screen of my body is really really fast i haven't had any issues whatsoever with the fingerprint scanner here about the app lock yes let me show you this is how it looks once you try to open lock tab and if you tap the fingerprint scanner it will show actually a right logo let me show you as you can see it showed the right logo and it has unlocked so yeah the app lock is actually working perfectly fine let me show you one more time as you can see, the app has unlocked. The app lock, I did not face any issues with that. And here are the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build. If you are wondering about the performance, overall this is how the recent panel looks like. You can go into the split top and stuff from right here. And if you go all the way to the left, you can clear all that from right here. By the way, just notice how fluid the overall UI is, I would say. This is one of the smoothest experience you will get from the Redmi K20 Pro in my frank opinion. And you may say I am biased, but this is why I love this ROM because everything is fast and fluid and stable with a lot of customizations. Whatever you like, you can just tweak the UI to your liking. This is what makes Evolution X one of the best ROMs in my opinion for the Redmi K20 Pro. And if you want your friends to know about the Android 13 Evolution X ROM on the Redmi K20 Pro, about the whole experience of it, you can share this video with them. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.